Um, throughout the negative um, trying to rebuttal our state statements, they keep echoing that order fraud barely occurs, and I like to say that that's false. I already gave two examples, um, and if I could just repeat them. Uh, the first one was a, a 18 month study that showed that 341 people illegally voted and that changed the turnout of an of a election. The other one that I stated was that 50 people who did not were not adequate and trained enough to, uh, who were not adequate and did not have enough personal knowledge to vote, were trained to vote for a specific person. That changed the turnout of a vote. And I like to throw out a new, uh, new fact that in the 2010 election, 239 cases of dead people voting occurred in Texas alone. And so um, there's plenty of instances where um, there's fraudulent voting happening. I understand it's very hard actually to get caught if you're a fraudulent voter. It's, it, there are many ways, there are many loopholes to get around it. And so even when I'm telling you the couple thousands of votes in total of the three states that I stated, um, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, we don't know what's going on in the other states. I only stated three different elections, and so we don't know what's going on in the other elections. <laughs> and um, repeatedly, um, the negative has stated that poll workers are our solution, and then they help. Um, they will help ultimately. Uh, what's uh, ultimately stopping uh, illegal votes? And I like to say, what are you doing now? Then, if all of these illegal votes are passing, and you're saying that's the solution, if we keep going with them as a solution, then voter fraud, fraud, fraudulent voting, illegal voting is still going to happen. And um, I like to touch on the case that they think that minorities are being specifically attacked. Um, this. There actually have been no cases where the law has been shown to violate a specific person's rights. Um, and the importance, so the Supreme Court stated that the importance of preventing um, illegitimate voting outweighs any vague and undocumented risk. And so, going on with that, i like to state that uh, voter ID laws actually do not have play a negative effect on the minorities. And I'd I like to give you facts on that. Justin, um, just in Kansas City, uh, established in 2012, they showed that there was no evidence that there was a dispro disproportional effect on minorities um, in terms of voting, but it, is, it has actually stayed consistent. And because of the consistency, even after the voter ID laws were passed, they, they see it as a positive thing. They see it as a success. Uh, furthermore, ID laws have been in place in Georgia and Indiana for over five years. And there have been no decrease in the turnout of minority, poor, or elderly voters. And so these are two states um, where they've had voter ID laws and where minorities have um, continued to participate in this. Uh, and so we believe that uh, voter ID laws are not actually attacking the minorities and it's not actually crippling them from voting. But in the reality of it all, while they stay hypotheticals and I give you facts of what already happened, minorities are participating at, at the constant rate. And so um, minorities are not being attacked and the, and the existing policy is failing. The uh, negative continually repeats that they should, uh, why bring up a new solution when the one right now is working? Well, it's not working. And so we believe that this is a relevant problem, a prevalent issue. And we believe that it's not about the numbers, but even if there's three illegal votes that change the turnout of the election, we believe that's a problem. And so regardless of the numbers, if this is happening, this is affecting the overall election system of the United States, we believe that we should change it.